This is what remains for now of Loxec Garments. A few weeks ago, it was a multi-million dollar business employing 300 people in the Kaesong Joint Industrial Zone, making uniforms and utility clothing. On International Workers' Day, its managers and supervisors sit in rented space in Seoul, desperately trying to fill orders. My shoulders feel heavier because of the weight of the responsibility to retain my staff and protect their livelihoods. And my heart feels heavy as well. I think this is an ordeal to overcome wisely, and I'm convinced that the company will be reborn. Park says that in the short term he's looking for factory space in suburban Seoul. If Kaesong is not restarted, he'll try Cambodia or Myanmar, provided the company survives long enough. Park's brother was one of the 126 who came back from Kaesong on Saturday, after more than three weeks inside their factories, sustained by a diet of instant noodles. He left behind more than $600,000 worth of raw materials and finished products, now watched over by North Korean security guards. They told me, don't worry, even if the electricity gets cut off, we'll guard your factory well, don't worry and come back. Just 43 of the expected 50 South Koreans came home in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Seven remain as the two sides try to iron out last-minute North Korean demands for wages and taxes. The South Korean government is promising to support the Kaesong businesses, although so far no public money has been given out. What the companies really want is engagement from both countries on restarting the complex. But for now, they can't even agree on the terms of its suspension. And seven South Koreans remain on the wrong side of the border. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Seoul.